Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So I can simply skip this slide. Um, some stuff about myself. This is my name, my company, our website. And I've been a Qt developer for more, more than 10 years. And uh, to, to celebrate that, I chose to wear a quite old Qt t-shirt today, I think. It's the oldest one on the conference. I don't know. I, I haven't seen an older one yet. So maybe I get another prize, free phone. For that or so. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is an existing application. This application has been in development for uh, probably eight years or so. And um, it's called the TKSU client, and it's a CTI application. CTI means you can dial phone numbers from your computer, and you can see incoming calls uh, on your screen. And as the application is quite old, it uh, used quite a lot of iterations of Qt. We started with Q2 for a prototype, and Q3 for, for the first real versions. And then we uh, made a kind of a rewrite for Qt4. I mean, most of you might know this. Uh, who of you have uh, had, were forced to, to rewrite your application for Q3 to Q4? OK. <laughs> it was quite a process, all the new stuff in Q4 and the incompatible stuff and the better stuff. So we did that too. So uh, to give you an overview about the history, I simply made some screenshots uh, that show very nicely how the application evolved over time. And it started quite simple with uh, just a tab widget, uh, line edit for some for search field and a result, a good old tree view, and some buttons. So not very much to see there. And version 3 got a little bit more complicated. We use, uh, I think, QCanvas for the visual visualization of the uh, current connections. And we added some new widgets uh, where you could drop favorites in and we made some nicer buttons. So it's kind of a, an evolution. And the version 4, which is still the current version that is kind of sold, uh, became even more complicated. We used a um, adjustable main window design, so you could uh, just adjust the window to, to fit your needs and put all kinds of favorites in there and uh, have a look at some uh, call log lists and have uh, the event agenda of your personal calendar. And of course, also uh, the possibility to search contacts by entering a name and again, getting the results in a good old Qt review. So uh, this is, as I said, the version that you can buy now if you want to. And I would simply uh, like to give you a short demo of that current version, so you get a, a feel of that application. I mean, it's a classical Qt application. I think most of you will recognize it quite fast. So I can search for name here, and it gives me some results if I type the name correctly. And I can select a phone number, and I can switch a button to dial that number. I can do that right now because I don't have a phone. I could uh, drag and drop a number in one of those boxes, and it adds a new favorite. I have a quite full <laughs> pop-up menu to remove it, and so on. You can also adjust the windows. Most of you will probably recognize that this is a Qmain window in the background. And so this is an application that works quite fine and is quite successful. So you all know what does a Qt programmer do if you must implement a user interface with Qt widgets. This is our programmer, and the first thing he does is he tries to look for the widget that is kind of the nearest match for, for what he wants to have. And then he starts to tuning the widget. And in Qt4, we have the possibility to use, for example, CSS for some tuning of the widget. We can also subclass a widget and change some of its behavior. And of course, we can, for item views, write custom delegates. And this is about the tool set we have in Qt4 for easy user interface customization. And if all that is not possible, of course, you can always write a new widget from scratch. And let's have a look at a few examples. For example, the, the tree view that I was talking about. Uh, 
it does not really look like a tree view, but of course it's based on a tree view. So we made some CSS styling with the currently selected entry, or maybe it was even a custom delegate, I'm not so sure. We played around a little bit with the colors. But, um, okay, so, where are we? Yeah, we use a tree view and we use a custom delegate to, to draw a speci special selection, with, which is in this case just a rounded border. And, but however much work you put into customizing a tree view, a tree view will still be a tree view. So if you want something else, you must write a custom widget. And another problem is with the toolbars that we use in that application. Um, if you want to dial a number, there's quite, a, quite some way from, from this number to this button up here. Problem is the long screen distance, and if you have an entry that is quite uh, way down the list, the distance becomes even longer, and this is not good. So that's another problem in the user interface. And the third problem I would like to point out is the pop-up problem, I would call it. So this is the pop-up that appears when you right-click on an entry. And what is the problem with that? There are about 12 entries in that pop-up and it's quite hard to find the right one. And added to this, there's one entry in the pop-up that is completely unrelated to the currently selected item. And we just put it in there because we just didn't have a better place. And to make somehow clear what, what the uh, actions really mean, we had to repeat the text because people would be totally confused if we only had, for example, dial on the screen. So we repeat the number. Next one I would like to point out is, uh, as I said, we, we use a QMain window as our dashboard implementation, and the QMain window has some problems on its own. So the architecture of the QMain window is that you have a central widget, and around the central widget you can um, put some docked widgets. I guess, I, I think you know that. And when you resize a docked widget, you automatically resize another docked widget. And this is sometimes very confusing for the user because he just wants to change the size of one widget, but the size of another widget becomes reduced. Another problem is with the QMain window design that when you have a perfectly arranged QMain window with all your favorite widgets in there and it's really nice and you like to use that and you change screen size or you just make the window smaller for a, small, a short moment and then you make the window to the old size again, you see what happens. It's messed up. So this is just not really the use case the QMain window was ever designed for. So it's quite, quite not a perfect interface, I would say. So, and we had exactly that feeling after some years that we might have to do something about that. And what do you do? You, do kind of a brainstorming, you make uh, maybe wireframes or just a uh, pen and uh, paper and, and a pen and you draw a user interface that really looks like the interface you would like to have. And this is what we made and our designer came up with this proposal, how it could actually look on the screen. And do you like it? Is it okay? Does it look good? <laughs> Yes? Okay, Tom likes it. <laughs> okay, the only problem is that, um, would you like to do that with Qt4? Hmm? So, no, not really. Because uh, doing that in Qt4 or well, with Q widgets would mean that you have to do all kinds of custom painting stuff and maybe CSS styling and whatever to, to really um, implement such a user interface. So that was not really an option. But something happened a few years ago. Uh, Trolltech was uh, bought by Nokia. Nokia built uh, mobile phones and Nokia saw that uh, widget-based interfaces are not really right for mobile phones and so they developed something else. And whatever the future of Qt or mobile phones will be. I mean, we had some very interesting talks already, so there's definitely a future for Qt or mobile phones, but whatever happens, Qt Quick is there, and we can use it. 
And we can also use it on the desktop. And so we sat down, or I sat down, <laughs> and I started using Qt Quick. And the designer gave me all the elements from its Photoshop file. And this is what I came up with in an amazingly short amount of time. This is the real, actual user interface. And it's pretty near to, to what the designer had in mind. And maybe it's even better, because it's usable. Do you like that? OK. <laughs> Thank you. So I would like to uh, live demo this version. Oops. Error. Oh, but we don't need that version any longer. I just close it. So this is the actual application. You can, this is flickable. You can uh, scroll through all your contacts. It's also working nicely with the keyboard. So I can use keyboard navigation, and I can uh, press the right arrow key, and it goes over here, and it goes down there. So the keyboard navigation is actually better than with the old Q uh, tree view implementation and the toolbars, because you can really access all the options with the keys. So I can use the tab key to toggle between these two. With the toolbar, you could not do this. You would have to assign some kind of shortcut or whatever to, to make the toolbar button accessible with a keyboard. And here we have touch, of course, if I had a touch display, mouse, and keyboard input. And it works quite well. You can also press uh, N for, uh, to, for ex um, direct access for all the names starting with an N or P or whatever. And um, the second feature of this application is the so-called dashboard. And this is what replaces our old Q main window implementation. And here we have a customizable view with items in it. And I can move these items around. Just adjust the screen size. We have a calendar. And it's all nicely animated and working pretty well. And this is all done with Qt Quick. So how did we do this? So for example, our list view. It's a standard QML list view element, of course, with a delegate. And this is the delegate. This delegate is starting pretty simple. I have some code here. It's simply a column with two text elements. So that I have uh, the name and the company name is just uh, below. And that is not really exciting. I mean, uh, you could simply. Uh, subclass Q item delegate and override the paint method and do some Q painter calls and achieve exactly the same. So that alone would be no reason to use Qt Quick. But it's getting more interesting. So with Qt Quick, it's quite easy to um, add your own Q object based business logic inside the C++ environment and simply inject it into the Qt Quick environment. And as soon as you are doing that, you are able to instantiate your business logic objects from inside Qt Quick. And this is exactly what we do here. So we have this object called CTI Extension State Provider that gives us some additional information for the entry we've just selected. And we can use it. This is all you need. You see the cursor? Yeah. This is all you need to get your business logic inside the Qt Quick environment. And then we can use it. We can simply say, oh, the color of uh, that rectangle around that number here shall be exactly the color that our business logic says it should be. So this is just two lines to connect your business logic to the visual appearance from the Qt Quick side. And this is really easy, really uh, nice to, to code, and really easy to understand, I think. So in, in uh, Qt4 and the classic item view stuff, you really would have to put all the logic somewhere in, inside your model. Although all this logic does not have anything to do with the contact data, you would have to put the logic into the contact model because uh, that is the only possibility to get your user interface updated whenever something changes, like the color. You must emit a data change signal to, to get the item view to update your screen. And so you get some logic into a model where it does not belong to. And with Qt Quick, we have a clean and nice separation. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, a delegate in, in QML does actually have a state. And this is not 
uh, the case for uh, a classic item delegate in Qt because a classic item delegate is just a paint method and maybe an edit editor factory, but it doesn't have a state. In Qt Quick, a delegate is really a first class citizen. Another use case for that, uh, we made an action menu that implements those fancy buttons here and the bubbles with the text, the tooltips. And the action menu is really simple. It simply extends a list to you. And then uh, you have, again, a custom delegate. And in this case, in this case, the delegate implements that bubble and the painting of that little icon here. So in this case, we, we have a delegate inside a delegate. And again, this is only possible because delegates are really first class citizens in Qt Quick. And this is very, very much different from the um, from the term of a delegate in, in Q item view. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to, to interrupt me or if I'm too fast or whatever. So next example, the Q main window replacement. So we built our own QML based dashboard and uh, the story behind this is that we actually started to do this uh, with a Q widget based implementation and I spent maybe a week or so to get that right with a QWidget based um, code. And then I threw it all away and redid it all again with uh, QML. And it took about maybe two days to get, to get it uh, basically working. And it's a very clean uh, model view um, thing that we did there and it works really nice. So I would like to show you a little bit about the implementation here. So what we see here are four items. And how do these uh, items get onto screen? It's really simple. You just use a repeater. A repeater is a very simple QML object. It cannot do very much. It basically only creates, like a factory, a delegate object for every item in a model. So in this case, we have four items in the model. Each item is uh, a row in the model. And the repeater simply creates four QML objects because there are four items in the model. That's quite simple. And um, all the logic that manages the model is done in C++. And all the layout handling, so where to place the items on screen, is also done on the C++ side. So we get good performance. And this is very important because when you do too much logic in Qt Quick, uh, this is all JavaScript, it becomes too slow. So try to do as much business logic in C++ as you can. And finally, the dashboard delegate is what actually um, implements the frame for one of those items. So the, the caption and those control buttons and uh, the creation of the actual view implementation inside of that delegate, which you could consider to be a delegate again. So let's have a look at one of those items. What we see here is a, a caption with two action buttons inside. And again, this is quite simple. Um, we have a special uh, button there that is the, the info button. When you click on it, you get an additional widget inside that item where you can do some settings. I can show you maybe in the live application to see the effect. So if I click on the eye, there comes an additional widget, widget in view. and where I could set up some stuff or I could remove entries here. And the implementation of that is really simple. So we just look if, if we have a settings item and if we don't have a setting, settings item, then we show that info button. And when we have a, set, a settings item there, this becomes something else than now. So in this case, the show settings item, item becomes invisible, but the trash icon and the hide settings item, they become visible. And this is really only two lines of code to get that logic working. And this is pretty simple. You no longer need to, to implement uh, some method like show settings item or hide settings item. This is really just a few lines of JavaScript code. Uh, moving a dashboard delegate around this is another interesting thing. Looks quite complicated at first, but actually it's only one line of code on the QML side at least. So 
whenever we uh, detect that the user drags an item around, we just notify the model and say to the model, yeah, please move that item to the position of the mouse. And then all the reposition repositioning logic is done inside the uh, C++ model. And the uh, items become um, notified about that. And they will uh, reposition themselves on the screen. OK, the dashboard delegate content, as I said, it's kind of like another delegate inside the delegate. And what we use in this case is a loader. And the loader is uh, quite a nice and flexible item in QML. You just have to tell the loader what it has to load, and then it loads it. And that's it. So we can uh, use the same dashboard item for a lot of different imp uh, view implementations of what the content of the item is supposed to be. So that's it. So he's, he can go now. And um, I don't know what is the time. Uh, got time. So I'm pretty fast, I think. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So um, what I would like to demo now is uh, maybe the wireframe thing that I've prepared, prepared somewhere, if I can find it. Demo. Oh. Just have to fire up a find command, I think. What was it called? Just can't remember. Oh, sorry. I must skip that. I'm too nervous for that today. <laughs> so let's get back to the presentation. So some best practices that we found out during the use of Qt Quick, um, really use Qt and C++ to, to implement any kind of business logic. Don't try to put too much logic uh, inside of uh, your, your QML, because then you need a lot of JavaScript logic, and it's all interpreted and not very fast. Try to use data models and put all the network communication uh, inside of the C++ part two. I mean, there are some ready-made components in QML that uh, do stuff like fetching things from the network for you via HTTP. Uh, but me personally, I, I wouldn't use that. I still would do that in, in C++ because there we really know what happens. And you can use QObject and QAbstract item model to create a really nice interface between C++ and QML. And you should really use uh, uh, limit the use of QML to implement data presentation and, of course, user interaction. And the most important thing, I think, is um, you must really try to get a good designer because um, the look of the application is really important. It's quite easy to, to make an ugly application with QML, but um, try to contact a designer. So that's basically it. With Qt Quick, I think we have really, really great possibilities in the future of Qt. And that's it. Thank you very much. Of course, don't forget to give me maybe some good ratings afterwards. So I think we have plenty of time. How did you find the uh, performance going to Qt Quick? Qt Quick? I mean, I noticed when you were moving the main window in your QT4 yeah. application, it was very jerky. Mm -hmm. But when you were moving uh, your uh, dashboard widgets around, it, it was very smooth. Yeah. Is that fairly comparable or to what you what we What we um, saw was um, that the um, GL widget kind of helps in this case. So when you use the pure software, uh, QPainter, Rasta engine, it's a little bit slower but the um, GL implementation is pretty good already. Although it's not the scene graph, I think we get quite a performance boost uh, when Qt5 is ready. We haven't yet tried it, but it's one of the next things I would like to do. So how did you do, how did you do debugging of these user interfaces? Um, debugging inside of the QML stuff, console print, uh, or I'm console sorry. log, console.log. 
So printf debugging kind of uh, inside the QML stuff. It's the easiest thing to do. You can also set breakpoints, but you have to do some additional stuff inside of Qt Creator to enable a debug version of your QML code. It's possible, but I didn't do it. I just uh, use print. Did you have any concerns about quality? You're essentially shipping your bugs. That you, the, the bugs that you could have caught at compile time are now you're shipping. The, you could potentially ship them. Yeah. And the customers might find them. Did you have any issues with that? That's uh, a basic problem of, of dynamically typed languages like JavaScript. Uh, this is what I mean with put as much business logic as you can in a good language like C++, where the compiler does most of the bug catching for you. And just try to, to use JavaScript for some kind of glue code that is not so error prone. So then you, you don't really have a problem with that. I mean, it's a little bit harder to refactor stuff, but I think in the latest uh, creator version, there are even some nice tools for renaming properties and stuff like that, so that's not really an issue. I'm going to say, just um, for cross-platform issues, I mean, the old school thought was, was that uh, you, know, you want it to look like the native environment. Yeah. So your application, from what I saw, you know, doesn't look like a Mac or doesn't really look like Windows. Uh, what was your decision making on that, and, and how did you? Well, when you um, have a look at current applications, for example, on the iPad, there is no such thing as a native appearance anymore. That is no longer the, the focus for some, some type of applications. I, I think the better way is to uh, really give the user a good, a perfect user interface for the use case of the application. And the user is not that much interested in the perfect native looking button. It's, I think the, the paradigms are kind of changing mm -hmm. in, that, in that field. Okay. Yeah. But that response is, um, of course, not a general response. I mean, if, if I would do a spreadsheet, a sp spreadsheet application today, it should look like a native office application. But this is a different kind of application. Thank you.